Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to generate seismic loads according to the equivalent lateral force procedure in STAD Pro Connect Edition. Now before we jump into our STAD Pro model, let's first quickly discuss the permitted analysis methods of seismic, seismic analysis per the ASCE 7. The ASCE 7 will allow us to generate seismic forces according to the equivalent lateral force procedure as described in section 12.8, or the modal response spectrum analysis as described in section 12.9, or the response history or time history analysis as described in chapter 16. Now for this training course, we're going to assume that we fit within a category where the equivalent lateral force procedure is permitted. Please refer to your local building code to determine which method of generating seismic forces is required for your particular structure based on your project location and usage. Over the next series of videos, we are going to be showing you three separate workflows that you can utilize in order to generate your seismic loads in STAD Pro Connect Edition according to the IBC equivalent lateral force procedure. These workflows will show you how to generate your typical seismic loads. The next workflow will show you how to generate your seismic loads, including the effects of accidental eccentricity. And finally, we'll also show you how to generate your seismic loads to include orthogonal effects as required. In this first video, we're going to be showing you your basic seismic loads that'll be acting in both the positive and negative X directions without considering orthogonal effects or accidental eccentricity. Now let's turn our attention to our sample model that was supplied with this training. As you can see, we're gonna start with a model that's already been created in STAD Pro. Now our typical workflow in STAD Pro Connect Edition is to work from left to right within your workflow page control area located right above your view window in your graphical user interface. Now for this particular model, you'll be able to see that all the geometries, properties, materials, specifications and supports have already been created. And please take a little bit of time to review all of this information to familiarize yourself with this model. We are now at the point in our workflow where we're ready to start taking a look at some loading. So let's go ahead and select the loadings page within the workflow page control area. Now while doing this, I'm going to expand my definitions area and also my load case detail section. Now you can see some load cases and some load items have already been specified for this particular model. Let's go ahead and take a look at our load case details section first. Now what we're going to see is that our four seismic load cases representing seismic coming from your positive and negative X horizontal direction and your positive and negative Z horizontal axis location have already been specified, although these load cases are currently empty as we're gonna show you how to add those load items during this video. In addition to that, we've already specified our dead load and our live load acting on the structure. Let's talk first about the order of load cases within this load case detail section. In STAD Pro, it is a program requirement that the seismic load cases must be positioned before any other load cases in the load and definition dialog. If a model already contains other load cases, then your seismic load cases can be created in the STAD editor to ensure that they are located at the top of the list. Now we can see from this model that we've already located our seismic load cases first in the list, so we've fulfilled that requirement. Let's also take a look at the way we've modeled our gravity loads for this particular structure. Now, what you're gonna notice is that we utilized um, reference load definitions, which are found in the definition section of the load and definition dialog to define the gravity loads on our structure, which include dead load, live load, and storage loads. Now, a reference load case is solved only when it is later called upon in a primary load case.
The benefit is that it enables you to define as many load cases as you wish, but it will instruct the program to actually solve only a limited number of real load cases, thus limiting the amount of results to be examined. The other major benefit of defining our gravity loads as reference loads is that reference loads can be defined in one place and then utilized in multiple other places as needed. For example, for this particular structure, I'm going to be using the dead load and the storage loads to assist me in defining my seismic masses, which we'll see later on in this video. By defining them as reference loads, I can define them once and then use them both within my seismic load definition and also within my dead load and live load primary load cases, which are found in the load case details section. This way, if anything changes later on for my dead load or live load, I can change it in one location and then everything else will be updated. Now that we've taken a look at our sample model, let's also describe the workflow that will be required for generating seismic loads for any structure in STAD Pro according to the equivalent ladder force procedure. Now we can think of this as a three-step process. The first step that we're going to have to follow is to create our seismic definition, which will basically be used to specify our seismic code parameters. The second step in our workflow is to model the mass on the structure so that the program can accurately calculate the base shear. And then our third and final step is to then apply the seismic loads to the structure, considering any accidental eccentricities or orthogonal effects that may be required. As mentioned earlier, for this particular video, we are going to assume that accidental eccentricities and orthogonal effects are not required. So let's go ahead and get started with our first step in our workflow, which is to create our seismic definition. Now within the load and definition section of the model, we're gonna highlight our seismic definition item, and then we'll go ahead and click the add button. Now STAD Pro is able to generate equivalent lateral force procedure loads for several different US and international design standards. For this video, we are going to be specifying the IBC 2012 ASCE 710 standard. Now the first thing we're going to have to consider is whether or not we want to include accidental load by selecting or not selecting this checkbox here. Now this checkbox will prepare STAD Pro to calculate and apply torsional loads to account for any code specified accidental eccentricities. So if you do not need accidental eccentricity, as we're showing in this video, we're going to leave this checkbox unselected. Next, we're gonna move down in the dialog and specify all of our code parameters, which you should take directly out of your design standard. Now STAD Pro does have the ability to calculate your SS and your S1 factors in the United States by entering a zip code of where your structure is going to be located. With that information, the program can look up the latitude and longitude of your structure and automatically populate this information. If you would prefer to enter this information directly yourself, you can just go ahead and delete the zip code and also the latitude and longitude, and then these will become editable fields. For this training today, we're gonna to go ahead and allow STAD Pro to look up our parameters by entering a zip code of our project. In addition to that, you're gonna enter all the other relevant code parameters. So I'm gonna enter my long period, transition period, as described in ASCE 710, section 11.4.5, and we're going to enter that value as 8. We're going to enter our importance factors and our response modification factors, and finally our site class. Now as we move down, we're going to see some additional fields that we can enter. Um, one of the fields we're going to see is the time period field. Now the time period of the structure will be calculated by, St by STAD Pro based on section 12.8.1 of the ASCE 7. Now this will be reported in the output as your TA factor. Now as we scroll down, 
within this dialog, we're then going to enter any other code parameters. So I'm going to enter my index as 0.8 in both the X and the Z directions. Now I do have an option to enter in a user defined period of my structure within this dialog, but I'm going to go ahead and allow STAD Pro to calculate this information for me. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the user specified period empty. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the add button and you can see that my seismic definition, including all of my code parameters has now been specified. We're now ready to move on to the second step in our procedure, which is to define the mass of our structure. So for this exercise, we're going to show you how to define the effective seismic weight of the structure that will be considered to contribute to the seismic base shear. Now you can define this information with a variety of different types of load items, including your self weight. You can enter joint weights, member weights, or element weights, and we can also use floor weight options. In addition to that, we are also able to apply reference loads as the weight of your structure. Now, since I went ahead and defined all of my gravity loads as reference loads, I can go ahead and grab those and pull them into my seismic definition as needed. Now the effective seismic weight of your structure should include all of your dead load as defined in section 3.1 of the specification above the base of the structure and any other loads above the base that are required by the code. Now for this particular example, I'm going to assume that my dead load should be considered as part of my effective seismic weight. And I'm also going to include 25% of my storage loads. So I'm going to move both of these over to the reference load definition section, and then I'm going to specify their factors and I'm going to specify 0.25 for my storage loads. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the add button and then we'll finish this off by clicking close. Now what's important when you define your masses on your structure is that you have a consistent sign convention assigned to them. Either all of your numbers should be positive or all of them should be negative to ensure that they are able to be added together correctly when the program is determining what your effective seismic weight is going to be. Now the last step in our workflow is to go ahead and apply these seismic loads to our structure because so far all we've done is we've defined it and given the program enough information to calculate the base shear and the seismic forces but now we need to apply the forces to the model through a the load case detail section within a seismic load case. So what we're going to do is we're going to define new load items within each of these seismic load cases. To start that process, I'm going to select the seismic load case I'm working on. I'm going to go up to the loading tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on my load items icon. Within this area, I'm going to then find my seismic loads option. Now it's very important that you create your seismic definition before applying your seismic load items as the seismic loads item will not be available until a seismic definition is created. Now this first load case represents seismic load from the positive X direction. So I'm going to specify the direction as the X direction with a factor of positive one. I am not performing an analysis to consider accidental eccentricity. So I'm going to leave this checkbox unselected. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click the add button and then we'll click close. Now that we have successfully modeled our first seismic load case, let's complete this process for our seismic load in the negative X direction and also the positive and negative Z directions. Now for the negative X direction, we're going to keep the X direction specified, but we're going to change the factor to negative one. And we'll repeat this process exactly for the seismic load in the Z direction. We have now completed our workflow for generating seismic loads in STAD Pro Connect Edition. 
If you would like to take it a step further to review the loads that were calculated, you're going to want to make sure your model contains an analysis command and then you perform the analysis to view the loads that were applied to the structure. In the workflow page control area, if I select the analysis page, I'm going to notice that a perform analysis command has already been provided for this model. To perform the analysis, I'm going to go up to the analysis and design tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the run analysis icon. After the analysis is performed, if you would like to review the results of the seismic load calculation, including your design-based shear, you're going to want to proceed to your output file. Within the output file, STAD Pro will provide a block of data or calculations for each of your seismic load cases that you included in your analysis. Within this block of data, the program will provide the time period that was used in the calculation, your CS factors, including your upper and lower limits, and also the design base shear, considering the seismic mass that you modeled on your structure. And the design base shear will be indicated for each of the seismic load cases that you included in your analysis. Now, once you're done reviewing this information in the output file, you can proceed back to your main modeling mode and review the results of how the loads were being applied to the model. To view that type of information, I'm going to go to the loading page within the workflow page control area, and then I can select each of my seismic load cases, and I can review how the loads were applied to the model. If I would like to review the magnitudes of these forces, I can go up to the View tab in my ribbon toolbar, select my Label Settings icon, and tell the program to display my load values. Now the lateral nodal forces have been determined by STAD Pro, which has distributed the base shear throughout the structure according to the ASCE 710, section 12.8.3. This concludes the process for applying basic seismic loads to your structure without considering eccentricity or orthogonal effects. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.